Pastor Anthony is here. We just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Come on, on behalf of my family, my wonderful, beautiful bride, Pastor Brenda, my beautiful kids, we want to say Merry Christmas from, come on, from my house to yours. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. We, we just pray that your Christmas season is filled with hope, love, peace, and joy. And we pray that you're spending some amazing time with your family. I'm always reminded around Christmas and even my love for Christmas. And even as we begin to dive into the gospel is about the, the expectation of the arrival of Jesus Christ's birth. I love diving into the, the Christmas story and we begin to see the expectation and the, the urgency and the, the sitting and the waiting and waiting for the amazing gift to come to all mankind. 
See, what, what, what I love about the Christmas story family is that that faith has an expectation that, that when that when we have faith, we we understand and we're going to see right here in the gospel that that faith is the assurance that we place in Jesus Christ. See, faith actually gives us something to look forward to. Faith is hope. Come on. Peace has a name. Joy has a name. Love has a name. Hope has a name and his name is Jesus Christ. I pray that even in this season, this Christmas season that we're in right now, Jesus is still the reason for the season and we have something to expect. We have something to hope for as we're walking along. Our, our faith is our response to the love, the gift that God has given us. And as we begin to dive into his word, if you if you have your Bibles, I, I, I want to read Luke 2. Come on, I want to dive into the Christmas story found right here in, in Luke. And we're, we'll begin at verse 8 through 20. And I'll be reading from the CSB and then you can follow along. It'll be right there on the screen for you. And it says in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. And then the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid for look. I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there were there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When an angel had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherd said one to another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurry off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger after seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. Family, I, for our next few moments, I, I want to preach uh, that from this message, this subject title, RSVP. Come on, if I, if I can even say it in French, watch this family. Ray Pondon, they vous play. Come on, Ray Pondon, they vous play. Did I, did, did I get it right, family? I, I don't know. Google it. But it means respond if you please. Respond if you please. Father God, we thank you for these next few moments as we dive into your word, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of all time. Thank you so much for loving us in a, in a, a special, unique and beautiful way that the only one in Jesus, Jesus Christ wrapped in flesh, born of a virgin, came to save us, not condemn us but to give us eternal life. Thank you so much as we celebrate, we pause and reflect, we receive your love today. Amen. RSVP. Can I share a, a quick story with your family? Man, my favorite toy of all time growing up was the Rock'em Sock'em Robot. Come on, if you know anything about Pastor Anthony, I, I mentioned this a few times in my sermon, come on. Growing up, this was my toy. I, I even remember to today when I first received my, my first <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em Robot, which means I had multiple. But I also remember the Christmas before receiving my first Rock'em Sock'em Robot. Man, I, I remember I was at the age of 10 years old and 
I remember a neighborhood toy store was actually giving away the toy for free. They were doing a raffle in it. If you had one of the special tickets, come on, you could actually receive the Rock'em Sock'em robot for free. And, and can you believe it? Come on, yours truly. Come on, yes, God favored me and at the age of 10. I, I won the special ticket. And I remember going home and, and sharing the good news with my parents and say, hey, I, I won the ticket. Now, can we can we accept the invitation and go to the store and receive the gift that's waiting for me? Well, to be honest, my, my parents thought it was a little scamish and they, they they didn't receive the invitation. And and since we didn't accept it, we we actually lost out on receiving the gift. And I and to, to be honest, I, I don't blame my parents because if 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 my 10 year old would have came to me, I probably would have thought it was a little bit of scamish as well. But I remember that we we didn't receive the gift because we didn't respond to the invitation. See, what we find right here in, in, in the Gospels and we're reading the Christmas story and, and we, we, we're, we're experiencing, we're talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. I love the obedience of the shepherds in this story. I, I, I love that they responded to the invitation. They, they accepted the RSVP. And through their obedience, they experience an encounter with our God. Man, I, I believe that we can we can extract so many principles right here in, in, in this Christmas story as we're we're celebrating the, the, the birth of Jesus Christ, because I love that the, the shepherds heard the word. And by hearing the word, they moved on the word. Follow me, family. They, they heard the word and they moved on the word. And by moving on the word, come on, they experienced an encounter with God. See, see, faith should always create an expectation that we're getting ready to have an encounter with God. And the shepherds out in the field, they, they received the word and, and, and they didn't stay put, but they moved on the word. As I was reading this and, and having a moment with God, I, I can feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And I, I begin to wonder in this specific season that I'm in, that, that you're in, are we moving on the word? Are, are we moving on the word that God has spoken to us? Or are we are are we staying put at a green light that God has already given us? Man, man, God is speaking to you. God is sharing vision with you. God is sharing purpose with you. And hear me, my friend. Hear me, my brother, my sister. You're not staying at a red light. You're staying at a green light. And God is saying it's time to move on his word. I, I want to extract three points for our next for for our next few minutes together, family, that we can learn. We can actually learn from the obedience of, of the shepherds here in the Christmas story, because I believe when we move on his word, it creates joy inside of us. When, when we move on his word, it, it creates a sense of hope for our future. When, when we move on the word of God, it gives us a peace and a love that surpasses everything that is so overwhelming that we can't, can't even put logic to it. When we move on his word, we have an expectation of knowing that God is getting ready to meet us in a place that we can't even put words to. Let's move on his word today. My, my first point, if you're taking notes, family, just, just jot this down is hearing is an activator. Hearing is an activator. When we hear what God is speaking to us, it should activate our faith. Sometimes in my life family, if I could be transparent, I'm, 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 I'm waiting to see what I'm waiting to see what God had said in order for my feet to move. There we go. Uh, I'm waiting to see it. God has spoken it to my spiritual ears but I'm waiting for my natural eyes to see it in order for my feet to begin to move in a direction. 
But we understand it, family. Come on, can I preach it to you on Christmas Day? We, we understand that our sight should not move our feet. Actually, our ears, uh, 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 hearing God's voice should should move our should move our feet. We have we have to stop waiting for sight to activate our feet. Can I give you a little bit of scriptures this morning, family, uh, for our Christmas time? Come on. Romans 10, 17 says it this way. It says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Let's break it down a little bit. It does not say that so faith comes from sight. It does not say that faith, so faith comes from feelings. It it says so faith comes from hearing. It, It comes from hearing God's voice. Family, my friend, I pray this for you right now. Do not allow other voices to diminish the one voice you need right now in your life. Because when God is speaking to you about purpose, when God is speaking to you about the upgrade, when God is speaking to you about moving you according to his plan, according to his purpose, his voice matters. Do not allow other voices to diminish the one voice that's very important to you right now. Because that voice is going to increase your faith. Your faith gives you the strength to keep going. Your your faith gives you the strength to never quit. It's, It's your faith. So by faith, by hearing the word of God. See, see, here here's some ways to hear God better. I believe staying in close proximity with God actually allows us to hear God better. See, we 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 hearing God in his word. Hearing God in prayer, hearing God in in worship and hearing God in community. When when we're walking out these four applicables or applications in our life, this is cultivating a relationship of staying in close proximity with God. So when God begins to speak, it's increasing your faith. And when he begins to increase your faith, you have the strength and the obedience to walk in the direction that God is calling you to walk. If I can say it this way, family, the shepherds heard the word and by hearing the word, they followed the word. By following the word, the word led them to an encounter. The word will always lead you to an encounter with God. My my God, what what is God speaking to you right now that you could be possibly missing out on because we refuse to move in the direction that God is calling us to do? His word is always going to lead you to better. His word is always going to lead you to that remarkable experience. And I love that the shepherds right here, instead of staying put, they moved on the word. Can I say it again? The word always leads to an encounter with God. This, This is actually our second point. An encounter is God's promise to us. CC family, The shepherd's obedience led them to an unforgettable encounter with God. They will never forget this moment. Come on. When 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 you when you sit in God's presence, you won't you won't you won't forget heaven. When you see the birth of the Savior, this is a moment that you will never forget. And and by hearing the word, or can I say it this way, by responding to the invitation. mm, By responding to the invitation, they they got to witness and and remarkable encounter with God. But family, if if you're kind of like me, when I when I read the scriptures, I always kind of I don't want to stay on face value. I love to I kind of love to flip the coin a little bit. And what I mean by that, what if the shepherds decided to stay put? What what if the shepherds didn't believe the word that the angels were speaking? What what if the shepherds actually said to one another, hey, hey, let's actually let's actually just wait. Let's wait until somebody else actually goes and experience it for themselves. And they'll come back and tell us. And then once we see it, then we'll believe it. Come on, come on. Apply that to your own life. Come on. Well, what if you're staying put because you actually haven't seen it with your eyes, but God has already spoken it to your heart? Come on, somebody. 
And, and, and could we be like the shepherds and, and instead of moving like they did, sometimes we can flip the coin. And what if the shepherds actually stayed put? Wow. They would have actually missed this encounter with God. They, 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 they would have actually missed out on such a, a remarkable experience with God. See, it, it, it reminds me, and I ask myself this question in, in this season of my life, wow, God, what am I missing out on because I'm deciding not to be obedient to your word? What, what experiences, what encounters that I'm missing out on because I'm deciding to play it comfortable, stay in the box, come on. And I believe this is a word for you, my friend, that God sometimes can call you to step outside of the box, trust his word, and his word is going to lead you to an encounter with God that you will never forget. I believe when you decide to agree with what God has spoken on you, your healing is there, your breakthrough is there. Come on, the testimony that you're waiting for, you're getting ready to receive it and walk into it. It may not come wrapped like you expected, but God has already spoken a word to you and God is just waiting for you to obey so that you can be a witness to what he's getting ready to do in your life. Can you write this down? Obedience is allowing God to set your directions without you seeing the full details. Yeah, can you be obedient to the word without knowing the full details of the plan? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what obedience is. That's what the shepherds did right here. Out of nowhere, the angel speaks and they, they, the word says they hurried. They hurried because the word spoke to their heart and they knew they had to be obedient. And through their obedience, they were able to witness to this. Can I say it this way? Come on. Obedience belongs to you. The results belongs to God. Let me say it again. That's for somebody. Obedience belongs to you. The results, the experience, the encounter belongs to God. What, what, what is God calling you in this season to actually RSVP to his word? I believe God is saying, if, if you're ready to have a, another encounter with me, I need your yes on this. Come on, RSVP. Come on, somebody. Because obedience will always lead you to encounter with God. And my third point is this. This is a good one. My third point is this. As I get ready to, to close this um, kind of kind of land the plane here. Watch this family, because the third point is this. Sharing is our response to him. Luke 220 says this family says the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they have seen and heard. Can I say that one more time? Praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. The, the shepherds heard the word. The shepherds experienced the word with their eyes. The, the shepherds, now they're actually sharing the word. See, family, our response to the invitation of God's love is to not just experience it for ourselves, but to actually share it with everyone else. See, that's the beautiful thing of the Christmas story. It's about sharing what God has already inputted into you. Man, it's to actually be in a position and say, hey, God, you love me so much. Even where I am, you still love me. I need to share what you have given me. I love that the shepherds had such an encounter with God that they could not keep it to themselves. Wow, family, God has been so good to you. Our response to his love is to share. You want to know one of the best things you can do in this season? Share God's love. One of the best things you can do in this season is share God's peace.
One of the best things you can do in this season is share God's hope. Turn to your left, turn to your right, turn to your neighbor, turn to your family, your friend and share God's hope. Because when there's a savior, there's a way. When there's a savior, he's the way maker. When there's a a savior, there's always hope for tomorrow. That's what the Christmas story reminds me all about family. And as I get ready to, to close right here, I, I, jot, I jot this down in my notes for us to share today. Because my, my question to you today, my friend, as we celebrate and take time to celebrate the birth of our Savior, and to, to, to celebrate the birth of our King, my question to you today, how are you RSVPing to God's love today? How are you responding to God's love today? The the beautiful thing, the invitation has already gone out. John 3, 16 says it this way. It says it so beautiful that God so loved us. Come on. That he sent his only begotten son to, to love you right where you are. That's the invitation. Our faith is the response of the invitation. How are you RSVPing today? If I can take you back to, to the story when I was 10 years old, I, I, I remember not receiving the Rock'em Sock'em robot because we decided as a family to not respond to the invitation. Well, well guys, man, my, my father loves me so much. I remember the following Christmas, He actually created an opportunity so that I can actually experience such a wonderful gift. Even though we failed or or even though we missed out on the opportunity the the previous year to, to have such an encounter, my father loves me so much that he created a way so that I can have that that experience. Man, I woke up on Christmas morning and right under the tree, come on, being 11 years old, I remember having my first Rock'em Sock'em robot. That's a word for you today, my friend. Because even though sometimes we can look at our life and say, hey, we missed out on this and we failed at that. I believe this. His love never ends. His love never fails. he, He is the gift that keeps on giving. So wherever you may find yourself today, understand your father is always creating opportunities for you to respond to his love. I pray this today for you and your family to to take time to pause and reflect. And the biggest response could be, how am I RSVPing today? And God, we, we, we love you so much. How are we RSVPing Today, can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for this moment right now. We thank you that as we dove into your scriptures and and saw just the beauty of the unraveling of the birth of Jesus Christ. We honor even the shepherds, their obedience, to have such an encounter of seeing the birth, being there for the birth of Jesus Christ. We see through the obedience that they shared the good news. We grab hold of that today and we respond in the creative way that you have called us to respond to today. You love us so much. We are your sons and your daughter. We, 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 we worship you today. So for, for the one that we're praying for even right now, hey, hey, maybe they're in a space right now where they feel as though they missed out on your love and They feel outcast today or they don't feel connected today or they don't feel that they're a part of the family. God, we're praying right now that the invitation is still out there. The invitation is still available. I pray that you speak a word to their heart right now, understanding that your word, that your love always pursues them. And we pray right now that they will give you their yes and receive your invitation and receive your love. We pray for the next set of folks. And we mentioned about the invitation, the greatest invitation 
is to actually accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And, and hey, maybe this is your first time or, or maybe you're rededicating your life. What better time to rededicate your life to Christ is around Christmas season. And we want to pray for you right now. We, we want to lead you into a salvation prayer. You can repeat these words directly after me and, 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 we, and we would love to connect with you and, and walk along the path and continue to see you accept the invitation that God is placing in your life. Just repeat these words after me. Jesus, we love you. I am a sinner. Thank you so much for dying for me. I confess, I believe, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Live in me. Continue to do incredible things. I give you my life. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody shout amen, amen, amen. Come on, if you just committed your life to Christ or if you're looking to get connected, come on, please reach out. We have an amazing team that we would love to come around you, surround you with community. Come on, your best days lies ahead because Jesus is walking in front of you. For the rest of you folks, come on. We love you guys so much. We pray that you are having an amazing Christmas. Come on, we can't wait to worship with you in person again. Until then, we love you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great one, family.